You've always heard that building your own computer can usually end up with a less expensive system and you get more for your money, right? But sometimes building your own computer can seem a little scary. What if somebody came up with a great kit where you knew all of the pieces worked together and even gave you all the instructions to put it together? Well, this right here, this kit from NVIDIA, is the NVIDIA GeForce Do-It-Yourself Kit, is all of those things. It's every component that you need to build a great system and it includes all the instructions to make sure you put it together correctly so you know everything works and you've got a guide to help you put it all together. Now, in addition to this guide, we're going to go ahead and show you exactly how you can assemble the system right here in this video. It is uh, loaded with great components. It's got an Intel E5400 processor. That's a 2.7 gigahertz dual core processor. It has a GTS 250, NVIDIA GTS 250 graphics card with 512 megs of graphics memory. It has a 500 gigabyte hard drive. It's got two gigs of RAM and, of course, uh, what system would be complete without your DVD burner. It also comes with that. Includes the power supply and the case as well. So you have tons of great components that are uh, all going to come together to form a really, really spectacular PC. So let's go ahead and show you exactly how you put all of these components together. So the first step to getting your PC put together is to prepare your case. And we do that by installing our DVD drive, our hard drive, and our power supply. So we're going to show you how easy that is right now. We're going to go ahead and start with the DVD drive. Now the first step to installing your DVD drive is to remove the insert at the top of the case right here from the fascia. And then as this is a toolless case, we can actually just pop this off and we'll use that to secure the DVD drive in its slot. Then we're just going to slide the DVD drive right in to the PC. Now again, because this is a toolless case, what you want to do is line these two holes up right here, then take this, insert it right here, and screw it down. Now, that DVD drive is secure in the front of the case. Now, installing your hard drive is just as easy as installing your DVD drive. You simply remove the fastener from the side, and there is a fastener on the other side that you're going to want to remove as well. Insert the hard drive with the rear facing to the rear by simply sliding it right in to the bay of your choice. Once your drive is inserted, line up your holes for the fastener, reinsert the fastener, and clamp it down. Now our next step is to install the power supply. And uh, what you want to do is orient the power supply so the fan is facing down. In the case, you see there is a guide rail located right here. So you simply take the power supply, line it up, and slide it in. Then we're going to take those four screws uh, that look just like this and then screw in all four of those screws at the four points right here. Now the next thing we're going to do is install the motherboard risers inside of the case. And these the risers are these little guys right here. And these separate your motherboard from the case itself. Now you're going to install these in the six points that are referenced in the book that comes along with this. And those six points are U1, U2, U3, U4, U5, and U7. So you're going to go ahead and install these right in all of those holes. And the last step to getting the case ready is to install your motherboard I.O. shield, which is going to go right here, right through the back of the machine. Just pop it into place until it's secure. Now our next step is to prepare our motherboard. Now this kit actually comes with your CPU and CPU cooler already installed on the motherboard. So that's skipping uh, one of the more complicated steps of putting this together because it already comes put together. Now installing our memory is really one of the only things we have to do to prepare this motherboard, of course, since the CPU and cooler are already installed. So what you do is you take this memory module and you pick one of your memory slots located right here, these two black slots. So what you're going to do is open up one of those slots by pushing each tab outwards and then insert your memory module. Once you have everything lined up, you simply press down on both edges until the clips fold in. 
Now that we have our motherboard all prepared, it's time to actually install this in your case. Now, it would be advised uh, to go ahead and lay your case flat on the desk when you do this. Now, just for illustration purposes, I'm going to show you where you're going to put this. You're going to line up your motherboard with the risers and with the I.O. plate that you installed. And you want to line it up so that each of those risers is visible through the screw holes inside the motherboard. Then you take your six flathead screws and secure it to the case. The next step is to hook up all of the leads from your case to your motherboard. And this is where you're going to find the leads for your power switch, for your reset switch, for your power LED, for your hard drive LED. All of these uh, allow your computer case to interact with your motherboard. So install these according to the manual that comes along with the system. It'll show you exactly where to plug each of these leads into. The next step is to install our SATA cables, and these are used for your hard drive and for your DVD drive to communicate with the motherboard. So we're going to attach these between our hard drive and the motherboard and between our DVD drive and our motherboard. Now our next step is to make sense of this bundle of cables coming from our power supply. Uh, this is actually a lot more simple than you may believe, or than it may look here. First thing we're going to do is connect a 24-pin main power supply connector to our motherboard. And this is the connector that supplies all the juice to our motherboard and our CPU. Now the next step is to install our 4-pin 12-volt power connector to the motherboard as well. And that's located right up here. Then you need to connect your SATA power connectors, which look just like this, to your hard drive and DVD drive. Now some other connectors you'll find in the case are for the fan, and these use Molex power leads, and those can be found right here, coming off of your power supply. So you want to connect these to your power fan leads. Now our next step is to install our graphics card, and you do that by simply removing a couple of these tabs right in here to install your card. You lift up on this black tab to release the tension, and then you're going to remove these two metal inserts right here to make room for your GTS 250. Then you simply take the card, line it up with the blue slot here, and push it down until it is secure. Then you close up that black tab, and your video card is installed. Now the next step is to actually install the power lead to the video card. Now your last and probably the most satisfying step is to go ahead and put the side panel of your case back on and then secure it using the included thumb screws, and uh, that's it. Your next step is to attach all of your peripherals, your monitor, the included mouse and keyboard, your speakers, all of your USB devices, and you're ready to go. It is super easy to build, and of course, remember, you've always got uh, the user manual to guide you along the way should you have any questions or problems putting this PC together. It is an incredible way to get into the world of building your own PC. You can build a monster PC for very little money and have your hand held a little along the way. So go check this out. Brand new stuff from NVIDIA. It's the NVIDIA GeForce Do-It-Yourself Kit right here. To get more information on the NVIDIA GeForce Do-It-Yourself Kit, go to tigerdirect.com and do a search for N500-3002.